no, I really can't remember because they're so much the same. I have to go out. Oxygen is different, but that doesn't really tell you too much because uh, it depends on like the stoichiometry of the mix. But that is a good point. My stoichiometry was not as good as whoever did this. And so the one I did is this one has more oxygen left over. And no, I think actually it's from the, uh, I used iron oxide and aluminum powder. And when I put those together, you have to get the stoichiometry just right and so on. So there is a, a small distinction there. That's something that we'll look at more. Okay, now here is a comparison between the, this is the World Trade Center sample, and this is steel. Now you can see the distinction very clearly, can't you? These are not, these droplets in the World Trade Center dust are not molten steel. They don't have the same chemical signature. Let's see, I kept the uh, World Trade Center dust on the right in both of these. So here's the World Trade Center dust. This is the thermate. <sighs> Remarkable. The, the match is right on. It's arson. It is definitely arson. Now, 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 I want to, now I'm going to educate you a little bit. There's, it's a little more complicated in that if you look at a small spot on one of these spheres, that big sphere actually, look at the sulfur peak on that. So if you look at different spots, you pick out things you might not have seen before. In particular, copper shows up in this. Copper, a lot of copper. Copper oxide is used very typically in the uh, thermite reactions because it's, it gives you more energy actually than iron oxide. So it's very typical and we do indeed see copper in this one. And a lot of sulfur. The sulfur is unmistakable. I just wanted to show you though, as you move around and home in on different spots, you will see some variation in quantities and some metals that are in small amounts will show up. The copper shows up. Okay, now this shows how, you, how I went after the little spheres that you, now they're too tiny to see by eye. So I decided to use a magnet and a plastic bag. This is actual dust from the World Trade Center. See, you just simply, it's, the magnet pulls it out of the dust up to the top. The magnet does not touch the dust or the mm, iron rich component. And we simply pull it over to the side. And then I pulled it over close to the uh, edge of the bag. I have a pedestal with this carbon tape. And that microphone picks up too. <laughs> and when I push this then onto the uh, iron rich component of the dust, it adheres to my little pedestal. Now I put it in the electron microscope. And uh, actually, I should give credit. Um, I'm not the one driving, running the microscope. It's uh, actually a student who is doing that, who's actually running it. So as you can see, this magnet just pulls it out. This we concentrate, then the iron-rich component. And uh, I just thought of that technique myself. Then when you look at this iron-rich component in the dust, you do see some dust particles that come along. And you, when I first saw that, look at all those little spheres, see? Some of them are quite perfect, others are rough. Let's see, there, that one's quite rough. And there's about two dozen spheres in this view, if you look and count a lot of these. Okay, this is now at much larger magnification, that is a higher magnification. Two spheres, let me go back for a minute. That's these two right here. This is that, what is that, 102 power. We go to 1638 power with the electron microscope. They're quite pretty, actually. The uh, structure is a little different. I call this, actually, the student called this uh, sphere Y because it looks like yarn wrapped into a ball. And this was sphere four, it turned out, as we looked at several of these spheres. Now, something new as we look at these tiny spheres. So this is sphere Y. Does it look like thermite? Does it have the basic signature? answer is yes. I'll look at the aluminum peak there and iron. 
and sulfur. Iron, about 50%, aluminum, about 20%. Very typical for thermites also. Now we have a lot of manganese and potassium. Look at that showing up. When I saw this, I just about jumped up and down. <laughs> what does potassium and manganese, anybody know what would you use as an oxidizer? It, uh, uh, okay, I'll. Potassium right, potassium permanganate. It's a great oxidizer. I had put potassium perma uh, potassium permanganate in one of our thermite reactions the previous last September after I was put on leave incidentally <laughs> but uh, I was after I was put on leave I still kept going I want to know I don't care I want to know what's going on here and I'm just like you, I want to know, you know, we want to know, and we want some answers. So, uh, in these, uh, they're called luminothermic or thermite type reactions, aluminum powder, and then you have a, an oxide or oxidizer, iron oxide, Here, these are the typical ones, I wrote this slide some time ago, copper oxide, potassium permanganate, barium nitrate, sulfur of course to make the residue, this molten stuff when you're done to make it cut through steel quickly, you add sulfur. So here, I was just amazed, I mean this is nothing like steel now. These little droplets, the tiny ones, you know, 10, 50 micron drops, uh, these little spheres you now uh, have, potassium, have potassium and manganese. I mean, building materials, where are you going to get that much potassium in a building material, folks? This is the smoking gun, uh, another one. It is very strong evidence. This is the formula that I used if you're interested. In September, I saved the little spheres from the reaction as it went off. I looked at these spheres after I saw what was in the World Trade Center test. By the way, I remind you the reactions are dangerous, only to be done by trained professionals such as myself. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we compare with Thermate again. This is the, the this, this stuff. Um, and look at that, manganese, potassium, sulfur, aluminum. You see the same thing as what was in. And again, I did this Thermate um, reaction last September. I looked at the tiny World Trade Center spheres in uh, April, actually, earlier this month. Compare with steel, it's just nothing like the steel. I've looked at other spheres, there are variations. You still see the iron, potassium, sulfur. Sometimes you get more manganese like this one, shows up. Here's sphere four, that other sphere. Look at that, iron, manganese, potassium, sulfur, aluminum, and magnesium showing up in this one, which is interesting. So there, you know, there's some variations that do occur. Now, Let's see, this is thermite. I think I already showed you that. Expect variations, as I mentioned, depending on where you look at with your microprobe and also depending on what composition, whoever it was used. For different purposes, you might add potassium permanganate. It makes it react faster. For example, adding potassium permanganate is a great oxidizer. Ah, yes, the sulfur in the steel. Hmm. Now we're seeing sulfur in the microspheres. Ah, now I want you another quiz. Which one is from the World Trade Center and which one, uh, these are both microspheres, you see. One's from the World Trade Center, from the dust, as it whispers to us, look at me, I have something to tell you. <laughs> How I was formed, where I came from, and one of these is uh, from a thermate microsphere. Can you really tell which one is which? You really can't. And I don't remember. Oh, yes, I do remember in this case. <laughs> okay, not that it meant. Look, they have the same, they have the fundamental signature for thermite, 
we, a thermate, which is iron, 